is it time to say goodbye to the XC90? Uh, this is the last chapter in the XC90 history. One final hurrah. The last song, the swan song. Is it time to say goodbye to the one and only, the mighty, the legendary king, XC90? Is it time to say goodbye? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this XC90 series. This is the first video out and I will probably be making three or four videos on this exact XC90. And hopefully by the end of this series we will get the answer to if we have to say goodbye to the XC90. The reason why I'm asking this question are that in just a couple of weeks I'm recording this video on the 19th of August. And in like one month or one and a half months away, maybe two, the EX90 would touch down here in Norway. In many eyes, the EX90 are the XC90's replacement. And that's why I wanted to make this series here. While the EX90 are all electric, the current XC90 are still available as a plug-in hybrid and we have two mild hybrid petrol options with the B5 and the B6. This is a press car that I've just picked up a couple of days ago from Volvo Car Norway. I picked it up on Wednesday afternoon. This is a Mulia 25 XC90 T8 twin engine. It's finished off in the dark exterior theme, previously called R, R design, and it's in the ultra trim level. And the best part is finished off in the beautiful denim blue metallic. We are completely matching with the surroundings for the car and myself. Team blue, the best color. But is it time to say goodbye? That's what we're going to talk about. I'm really excited to get my hands on the EX90, but I got so much love for the current XC90. And the main topic for in this video are actually that this year the XC90 are actually celebrating 10 years anniversary. It's mind-boggling that it's actually 10 years since Volvo released the current XC90. As I said, I record, I'm recording this video on the 19th of August. We have to rewind 10 years to May 2014, when Volvo first dropped the teaser picture for the current XC90 generation. 10 years, it's hard to believe that it's been 10 years and it still looks so darn good. But in this video, as I said, we're gonna celebrate the XC90 and its 10 years anniversary. So I really hope you will enjoy this video. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Volvo Christian, and welcome to the XC90. Before we are kicking off the XC90 celebration, I just wanted to give a little explanation to why I wanted to book this exact press car. Because like two months ago, I attended an event with Volvo Car Norway. We traveled down to the headquarters of Volvo Cars, Torslanda in Gothenburg, to test drive the Modia 25 lineup all from the EC40 up to the XC90. We had all the cars available. Sadly, I only managed to drive two cars. I test drove the EC40 Black Edition and also the main attraction, XC90 Mollia 25. And that car was the reason why I wanted to book this car. If you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend to check it out. Really beautiful spec on that car as well. But that was the reason why I wanted this. It gave me a craving for more. I just needed to get back in the XC90 I realized how much I have missed it. But that was the reasoning. Let's now kick off the celebration. So let's get cracking with the celebration. We actually have to rewind uh, to the 27th of May 2014. So over 10 years ago, when Volvo first showed us the teaser picture for the all new XC90. Brand new car, new powertrain, new platform. This was on the SPA platform that later underpinned the S90 and V90, and later on the XC60, V60 and S60, all on the same platform. So there was a lot of tension uh, connected to this teaser and this presentation, because you know how many cars that will follow in this, uh, in this car. So huge excitement when they um, started this teaser project, 27th of May. And then we had to rewind three months later to the 25th of August, also in 2014, then we got the full presentation. They revealed everything, pull off the covers, we got to see a momentum trim level, and we also got to see the inscription trim level, the classy and stylish, really suitable to the XC90 character. But Volvo also presented two different styling kits, or maybe like two and a half, because there was a light version 
connected to these two kits. And these two styling kits were called Urban Luxury Styling Kit and Rugged Luxury Styling Kit. There was also a light version of that, that just had the front skid plate and the chrome decor and also the rear skid plate and so another diffuser in this brushed aluminum style. That was the light version. But if you went completely mad, you took the full kit. And if I remember correctly, it had a price tag on about 80,000 Norwegian kroners. Uh, but then you, get, you, you got everything. You got also the 22-inch alloys at that time. But the Urban Luxury kit had extended wheel arches for a more muscular look. We also had a wider or a more beefy side sill. And these two kits could be combined with either the running boards or a brushed aluminum side decor. A little, little decor along the side. And hands down, I loved these two kits. Uh, this urban luxury and the rugged luxury. Sadly, there's very, very few available in Norway. Uh, I hardly saw anyone. But luckily, I've seen a bunch of them in Sweden. And I'm going to overlay a picture of these so you can see. The only difference between the urban and the rugged was that the urban luxury was painted in vehicle color. The rugged luxury was unpainted black plastic along the side, all the way down here. So two kits with a one light version. We also got to see a first edition. They were all finished off in onyx black with the amber interior. They were all specked out to uh, the moon. They were available in both the D5, so the diesel on 225 horsepower, and also the T6. We didn't get the T6 here in Norway, but other markets got the T6. First edition, beautiful spec, limited edition, only 1,927 cars available. And I hope you know why exactly it was 1,927. But yeah, uh, beautiful cars. Really, uh, and they were all also numbered. You can see you had number 583 out of 1,927. So numbered cars, first edition, only available online. And one of the things I remember from the early stages, like August, September, October, I remember the crash testing they did with the XC90. Volvo presented this and showed it out to the public. I followed this live stream and I follow all the XC90 chatter with, yeah, I was really dead focused. I was so in love with the XC90 at that time. And it was so cool to see how, how they treated, how they tested the XC90. And I remember the one clip where they pushed the XC90 sideways out of the crash, um, crash facility center in Torslanda. Sideways on a, I don't know, a little construction thing. They just sideways and just pushed it out so you could see it flipping, flipping, flipping and rolling. I was just, holy crap. <laughs> I love that video. And also one where they put it down in a ditch so it actually jumped and got airborne for a little second or two. Uh, <laughs> there was uh, things I remember. But then in uh, September, I think it was like 17th of September 2014, they also presented the R design version. And then you, can, you could get two different options. You got the bursting blue metallic, but you can also get bursting blue in a matte version. Bursting blue matte. Once, once again, really rare option. Hardly i actually just seen one of the Mott version, also in Sweden. Probably Volvo's own. Really, uh, it, was a, it, it was a really expensive uh, option to go. I think it was like 25,000 in addition to the Bursting Blue paint option. So yeah, but it looked pretty wicked. So then we had the whole family. We had the first edition, Momentum, Inscription, we had the R design. And we had the yeah, first edition. We had the whole family with the styling kits and a bunch of different interior options, both in decor inlays. That was the start. And I was so in love with the XC90 that actually, also in May, but two years later, in May 2016, I actually ordered one for myself. I had to go bursting blue. I had to go for the R design, of course, since I went bursting blue. That was a signature color to the R design. I went for the D5 and I went I went all out, bursting blue, and I actually went for the 21 inch silver alloys. The alloys from the inscription version. I just love the silver contrasting to the bursting blue. I had the D5 all wheel drive, air suspension, 
I had a sport seat, Bowser Wilkins leather wrap dashboard, and I also had one rare thing, the Nubuk headlining. I had everything and I freaking loved that car. And I actually took delivery of that car uh, the 5th of August 2016. Amazing experience. I can overlay a little uh, tribute to my own XC90 now. But the story continues. We have to jump forward to February of 2019. Then Volvo gave the XC90 a little facelift, a little midlife update, both on the inscription and also the R design. Primarily, we got a new front. The R design version had a slightly redesigned grill. We also have had a new front diffuser. I can overlay a couple of pictures, both uh, pre facelift and also after the facelift. You can see the differences. I, I wasn't so amazed in the beginning, but eventually I was actually quite amazed by the new lower grill part and also the um, lower diffuser and the grill. Also a new Volvo badge. And the inscription also had a massive update. And for me that really lifted it to yeah, two or three uh, steps above. Because the previous inscription grill that was facing like outwards with this matte brushed aluminum style color but the facelift got, the grill went inwards instead, like little edge and then in really cool touch. And also we had more chrome finishing. So it looked really, really classy and stylish. I love the, if you have like a crystal white inscription, the facelift version, really, really beautiful. We also got a new interior option. We got the tailored wool from um, that time. They presented it in February of 2019. That, mean we, we, that means we got it on the Molya 20. So the Molya 20 was the facelift, both for the R design and the inscription. We also saw black window framings and black uh, mirror caps. So then you can easily spot a XC90 if it's pre-facelift or not, if it had the silver or the black window caps, uh, as long as they haven't uh, customized it afterwards themselves. But yeah, facelift. And then time went by and we have to jump over to September of 2021. And it was at that time they gave it a real technical update. Because on the Molya 20, it was just a facelift, the visual things, minimal things on the interior. We had like a new decor and there's a new seat upholstery, but there was nothing major. But in September 2021, they presented the biggest news in the XC90 and also the rest of the SPI, SPA lineup. There was a technical update. We boosted the battery much bigger and instead of the 87 horsepower rear electric motor, we got a motor on 145 horsepower. So bigger battery, stronger engine. So the system power, it went up from 390 horsepower and up to 455 horsepower in the T8 variant. And that was affected from Molya 22.5. So not the early Molya 22s, but the midlife Molya 22.5. And later on the Molya 23 and so, so on and so forth. So that was the biggest technical update. And it's in that spec we find this Molya 25. The battery, 18.8. I actually had written down some notes. Just gonna jump in the car because the battery has also changed from the beginning. Because at the start it was around 9.6. Just wanna find the notes so I don't say anything uh, wrong here in this. Um, 9.2 actually. Initially the T8 plug in hybrid 
when I started it in Molly 16, it was 9.2 kilowatt hours. And then in Molly 18, it went over to 10.4 and Molly 20, 11.6. But then September 2019, when I present, no, September 2021, when I presented this, it went up to 18.8 kilowatt hours with the new three layer battery. Same size, but they managed to have an additional layer. So really bumped up the power, 18.8 kilowatt hours. So that happened on Molly 22.5. Another key difference for me, uh, actually we got to the petrol tank, because the first T8, they had a really ridiculous petrol tank on just 50 liters, but on Molly 19, it boosted, at least on the XE variant, up to 71 liters, and we still have that today, 71 liters. And that happens, yeah, Molly uh, 19. Another thing I mentioned here are the AC charging. Since this is a plug-in hybrid, you can charge it here at home, AC power, this dumb flap thing going on. Let's see if you can connect it there. In the beginning, it was 3.6 kilowatts. But then Molly 24, so pretty late, they boosted it to 6.4 kilowatts. So now you can fill it from zero to empty in about three hours or so. I usually charge it overnight, and the consumption on, the, on this thing are <laughs> quite impressive. I had this exact press car since Wednesday, uh, Wednesday light, as a late afternoon, and I've driven about 400 kilometers since then. Today is Sunday, and the consumption is about 3.8. So yeah, you get a really low consumption if you want to, and if you have, a, if you're possible to charge it at home. And it's yeah, almost criminal that you can have so low consumption. It's lower than my S60. Another thing I want to talk about while we celebrate the XC90, are actually the success it has gotten the last 10 years. So we're going to look at the sales figures. We're going to start with the general sales figures for Volvo cars. So in 2023, Volvo sold 708,700 cars. Pretty impressive. And 595,200 of those were mild hybrids or plug-in hybrids. We also have a, had a little bunch with the diesels before they phased that out. And 16%, so 113,500 were uh, pure battery electric vehicles, uh, like the XC40 and the C40. So, all electric. And then Q1 2024, they sold 182,000 cars, uh, 182,700. And of those, I can put in the number here as well, 144,500 were recharge cars, so either plug-in hybrid or mild hybrid, and then 21% were battery electric, so 38,100. So a little increase on the battery electric cars. Uh, but you see, there's still a high demand for plug-in hybrids. So that's why we will fi find an answer in the last video to what happens if we have to say goodbye with the XC90, based on these numbers. You see, 77% still picks either a plug-in hybrid or a mild hybrid. 79% of Volvo's total sales. And as I said initially in this video, the XC90 are available in the B5, B6 and the T8. So the B5 and B6, those are the mild hybrid versions. But then we're going to look at the X, uh, only the XC90 sales figures from start and all the way to 2024 Q1. It took some time to find these numbers, but uh, all of these um, annual reports from Volvo are available online. I just had to look through them all. I'm just going to overlay, overlay them here on the side, or maybe that side, depending on where I have uh, room for it. We're starting in 2015, when it started, almost started to rain here, when it started to deliver out the XC90. The first year, 40,000. And then it went over to 91,000 the year after, 87, 94, 100, 92, 108, 97, and 107,000 cars last year. 107,500. In 2023, nine years after launch, that is, yeah, that is just impressive. How the heck can they sell 107,000 cars nine years after it got launched? This, that is only a testament to how good the car is. People love it and I love it. It's, it's the king. And 2024, 
first quarter. I couldn't find the numbers for the second quarter, even if we are in August now. But the first quarter, 26,000. And with that, if they can duplicate that for every single quarter, that would be approximately like 100,000 cars. So they are going st strong with the XC90. Really, really impressive uh, sales, sales figures. So that was uh, all the, the notes I had to um, have on my little cheat, cheat sheet. But we, we, now, 10 years after, what happens with the XC90? Well, you have to follow me in the next video to see what uh, answer I'm landing on. Is it time to say goodbye to the XC90? Let's see. Is it time? Maybe, maybe not. Let's see what happens in the next video. Maybe, yeah, in this XC90 series at least. I will be making like three or four videos. But at the end of this video, I hope it's, it's not too long already. I have compiled a little recap because I love to take pictures and I love Volvos, so I have a shitload of pictures on my computer at home. And I went through all the XC90 pictures in all the different folders from each individual years, and all the trips I've been and all the cars I've seen. I extracted the best XC90 pictures, either the best picture itself, or the best car and specification or history or, or um, memory connected to that car and compile it down to 90 cars, uh, 90 pictures. So at the end of this video now, you will see 90 pictures, my 90 best XC90 pictures as one last hurrah, one final um, celebration for me. So I hope you will enjoy this 90 pictures of the XC90 from the start and all the way up to the end here afterwards. Hope you will enjoy this. That was it for my XC90 celebration. The best pictures, the best 90 pictures of the XC90 or the best spec XC90s I've seen in the last 10 years. I really hope you enjoyed this, uh, this video clip. I really enjoyed making them and I have a shitload of pictures of the uh, XC90. I could probably make 900, but these are the top 90 for me. 
and we're ending it here with the Model 25. And still, after 10 years, it looks so darn glorious. I love the XC90, and as you saw from the sales figures, I'm not alone. I've only owned one XC90, but maybe I have to go back to the XC90. I'm such a huge fan, even if I don't need a space, I just love the comfort and the luxury and just the overall power it delivers. But that was, that was it for this video, I have to wrap it up now. Uh, tomorrow, actually, yeah, tomorrow after work, Monday evening, I will be heading down to Sweden to visit Volvo Cars Torslanda. Hopefully, I get to see a EX90 in Mulberry Red outside the fences so I can legally take a picture and share with you. Uh, that has evaded me and also the platinum grey on the EX90. And I just had to take a road trip with the XC90. So no work for me on Tuesday. I said I have to have a one day off work to take this for a road trip. And what better place is it to drive the XC19 down to the home of Volvo and they're also the place where this car are produced at Volvo's factory in Torslanda. It sounds like a winning recipe to me. So I hope I see you in the next video and also the last videos in this XC90 series so we can find the answer to if we have to say goodbye. And also as a little celebration to the XC90. 10 years. But now it started to rain here in Oslo, so it's time to jump in the XC90. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Take care and bye bye.